Nobody can do Jesus' work. Jesus can only, he's the only one that can do his work. And so now if our expectation is going to change, our eyes must shift from any intellect, any abilities of our own unto the God that creates humankind, right? for joining us today. It's our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHearing.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. All right, at this time we're going to go right to the Word of God. So I'm going to ask if you will stand and grab your Bibles and turn to the book of St. Luke, chapter 13. We want to read responsibly again and starting at verse 10 and we read down through verse 17 and beginning at verse 10 and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath and behold there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself and when Jesus saw her he called her to him and said unto her woman Thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And, and when, when he, he had said, said these things, things all, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Praise the Lord. Let us pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God, for this passage of Scripture. We thank you for the day set aside as Mother's Day. And we thank you for all the mothers. And Father, we ask a special illumination, a special touch a special inspiration from God for all the mothers and for the body here as a whole. I thank you and I give honor to your name and I ask it all in Jesus' name. Now take full control of this entire atmosphere and let your Holy Spirit be prominent and prevalent today. Heal, set free beyond our expectation, I pray. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Come on, let's give God thanks right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You may be seated. God bless you. As I was reading and praying for the wisdom of God for this day and that God would encourage the mothers that he would inspire and heal or whatever he needed. He saw fit 
this passage he gave to me. And amazing, also, we had uh, uh, Prophetess Gilliam to minister in Suffolk on this morning, and uh, her word to us was right in line with what God has given. So there's something God wants to say to not only the mothers, but particularly the mothers today, and to the body. And so we look at this passage of scripture here, and just briefly, if I had a title, I would call it A Miracle of Mercy. A Miracle of Mercy. A mercy is, when you think in terms of mercy, you think in terms of refraining from giving someone what's due them. It is also bringing relief when a person is in suffering. So a miracle of mercy. God is in the miracle business. And as we were this morning just discussing as we normally do coming from one work to the other and we just sort of reminisce and talk about the, the things that the Spirit is saying. But one of the things that did come out was a reminder to us that this really is the appointed time of God. And for us to raise the level of our expectation. It's, uh, it goes with the time and the season. When the seasons change, then we must change, right? The things that are done in winter are not done in the spring. The seasons, God has everything to do with it. But it brings about a change holistically. Change in nature, change in the, uh, the farmers, they begin to plant. And the list can just go on in what takes place. And so the season, it is a season where God has ordained for the ministry, for the vision that he has given. And because it is the time and the season, then he makes everything beautiful. Uh, it's, it's like the way of faith. Everything must be accepted by faith first, right? Before we can receive. And so it was just like he was reminding us. It doesn't matter what it looks like in the natural. But receive what God has said. That this is the appointed time. We embrace it. We believe it. We walk in it. We expect new things, right? Uh, so when we begin to expect new things. Then God begins to do new things. Do I have any witness here? So this is, he was just really reminding us, well, all of God's words are true. They're not, you know, they're not false, they're true. So in that reminder, it was such a, a reassurance to us, even through the ministry earlier, uh, that we are to grieve and stress no more about things that we've prayed for and about the oppressions that we've been under for so long. We are to grieve and stress no more. For the Lord has spoken to those things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it, it's something that really brings hope when we embrace it. And uh, I pray that this is what, it will, this is, uh, what God will do uh, even today as a reminder. So there's a, um, some observations here in this text here of Jesus him ministering to the woman that had been bent over, or one text says bent double, but the scripture says, scripture says bowed together. And so obviously it was a serious spinal condition, more than curvature of the spine. Uh, it could have been what they call scoliosis, but at any she was so bowed over, bent over, so bowed together that she couldn't straighten up. And if you can just imagine a person nearly doubled over, bent so low, 
and they could not lift themselves up and they walked around all of their lives just like that. And so we observe a few things. I just jotted down what we observed just from reading the text. One, the woman had a condition caused by a spirit. Jesus called that spirit a spirit of infirmity. Sometimes, in most cases, when a spirit is influencing and affecting a person's life, it's either moral or spiritual. Um, but in this case, it was a physical, totally physical. The lady's spine or the lady's condition, she was bowed together and clearly it was the work of a spirit. The second thing we can observe is the length of time of this condition. The Bible says 18 years she suffered this. And I was thinking 18 years for us would be 2001, right? 18 from 2001. She, if she was living today, it would have been 2001. Up until now, she had been suffering this condition where she was bowed together, bent together to the point where she could not even lift herself up. Another observation is she had a spinal condition, as I just said, and unable to straighten up. And um, it, was, it was a very humiliating condition, to say the least. And not even to mention what it did to her sense of womanhood and worth and esteem. It brought a lot of pain. And yet, it was a long time. Another thing we can observe is, which is a good thing, she was a daughter of Abraham, a woman of promise. Another thing that was observed is that this woman did not initiate getting help from Jesus. Jesus was the initiator. He took the step to call her after he observed her. And so not in every case does people go after God uh, for the result. There are some cases where God's just showed his wonderful mercy. And he looked at the woman, saw her condition, and he called her to himself. And he spoke to it, the situation, and he laid his hands on him. So these are some observations that was made just listening and reading the text. So there are three particular things I would like to share with you that God gave me that what we mothers, we, what mothers and we all can learn. And when I say learn, it is something that we may know in our head but don't really know. So these are things that God says we can learn um, from the text. Because, you know, when you learn something, it's a part of you, right? Uh, if someone told, came to me and says, two and two is not four, well, they don't have an argument, right? Because I learned that, that I know, I know this is true. So when God says uh, things that we can learn, it is things that he wants, us, wants to be a part of us so that we can uh, embrace it and move according to knowledge and understanding and wisdom. So three things here, mothers and the body, God is speaking to us uh, that we can learn. One is, he said, Jesus can fix your problem. Now, I would like for you, if you would, to look at somebody right beside you and look them right in the eye and say, Jesus can fix your problem. All right, now, we, I want you to think about this. This came from God. And right away, if you're like me, you start thinking about certain things that you really can't change. But you would love for them to change. Maybe about yourself or maybe about somebody else. Or maybe about your condition. But this is what the Lord said. This is what we can learn. One is Jesus can fix your problem. Let's give him thanks. Hallelujah.
The woman's condition was caused by a spirit. So the, the spirit, she couldn't do anything about it. She couldn't lift herself up. And she, maybe she knew it and maybe she didn't. But the fact still remains that the scripture points out that this particular condition was caused by a spirit. It doesn't mean every physical condition is caused by a spirit. It doesn't mean that, right? But it does mean that this particular problem was caused by a spirit for 18 years. It tells me that spirits can do things that sometimes people don't give uh, credit for them doing. And uh, so, uh, but it happens. But Jesus can fix your problem. He can fix my problem. The woman's problem, according to medical science, was impossible. There was no physician there that had an answer or solution to her physical condition. But Jesus could fix her problem. There may be situations and conditions that you and I are undergoing and may have been undergoing for years. And some may seem hopeless to us. And we could have just given over to just, oh, well, I guess this is just the way life is supposed to be for me. Maybe I'm just a victim of circumstances. But the Lord says to you, Jesus can fix your problem. So it's to bring hope in the midst of a hopeless situation, right? That's the nature of Jesus. And this is what I believe God wants to raise our level of expectations of him. Because if I have a limited expectation of him, then many times I'll get a limited edition of what God wants to do. But God wants to do more. And I want you to look at somebody and say, God wants to do more. For and to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may have a hopeless situation. But it's not hopeless. You may have prayed for more than 18 years. But it's not hopeless. And there was a man that had an infirmity for 38 years. Somebody said mine is close to his than it was the woman. But this man was hopeless when it came to his condition changing. There he was at the pool of Siloam and he was there simply by the pool and his condition limited his mobility. So he was not able to move swiftly. And he would try to do something in a hope that somebody could get a hold of him and just be there with him. So that when the water starts stirring, they could rush him in the water. Because it was such that the first one stepped in the water after the angel would come down and trouble the waters at a certain season... The first one that stepped in got instantly healed. So God never leaves society without hope, right? Even though the Messiah had not come, but there was hope still. Somebody, every time the angel would come and trouble the water, would get totally healed. Isn't God good? He is good, even though Israel was rebellious. So the thing is, uh, Jesus... As we look at our situation, and I don't have the name, but you, as you're hearing the word, your mind may go to a particular situation with a loved one of yours and says, wow, that means he can heal this condition. Because he doesn't want us to see life and embrace life as that's just the way it is. I have to lump it and like it. He wants us to begin to know that there's always hope with God. So you remember, the Bible says in Luke one thirty seven, for with God, nothing shall be impossible, right? So when we're dealing with God, God says, uh, when he was telling about the Mary 
and uh, Zacharias and uh, Elizabeth and Mary, uh, um, they couldn't, she couldn't have children. And God said you were going to have a child. And so now she's got to deal with her mental. All these years of just, just thinking nothing can be done. This is the way it is. Now, God is forcing her to change the way she believed, right? And to stretch her faith to seeing what had never been done. So now he says, he says, the angel says, for with God, after he, gave, he announced what was going to take place, he says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. How many is looking at God in that light that he's, uh, he's, nothing can, is impossible with God? Well, that's the, that's the way he wants to see him now. And uh, the book of Ephesians 3 says, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Can somebody give him some praise? I hope this will do what God wants to do to me, and that is raise our level of expectation in God. And we want, he wants us to take him out of a certain box. Nothing is going to happen to my situation. I, I done prayed too long about it, and it's just not going to change, you know. So I just got to have the right attitude about it and just go on through life. More than having a right attitude is a expectation that God's going to change things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God said, he said to me, God heals physical defects. And he proved that, right? There was a man there had a withered hand. And what did God, Jesus do? He healed the man. He said, stretch out your hand. And he healed that physical defect, right? God heals physical defects. So we want to bring back the God of the Bible, right? You know, you read the Bible and say, oh, boy, that would be so good if something like this happened. Now. Well, why not? It's the same yesterday and today and forever. So God heals. Look at your neighbors and say, God heals physical defects. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in this process, Hebrews 12 tells us that we have to look only to Jesus, right? Since God is going to do such thing, we, we can't look at mortal flesh. We can't look at the physicians. We can't look at the economy. We can't look at doctors. And we, we've got to see Jesus in this process, right? Because he's the only one that can do it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's nobody can do Jesus' work. Jesus can only He's the only one that can do his work. And so now, if our expectation is going to change, our eyes must shift from any intellect, any abilities of our own, unto the God that creates humankind, right? Let's give him some thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When God was dealing with Abraham in the Bible, saying that, here was Abraham, 90 and 9, and there was Sarah, 90 years old, too old to have children. She couldn't have children. It was just concluded that she just couldn't have children. So God waited until there was no hope for her having a child on her own or through man. Y'all with me? And after that, all hope was gone, then he comes and say, Sarah, your wife is going to have a son. So Sarah, like most of us, had a certain attitude. <laughs> Shall I find pleasure as old as I am? She didn't say it aloud, but she thought it in her heart. 
out inside the tent, and the Lord was standing outside the tent when he was talking to Abraham what he was going to do. So all of a sudden, when she said it in her heart, she didn't say it aloud. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? He stopped and said, oh, wherefore did Sarah laugh? Why is she laughing at what I said as though it can't be done? And here's what he said. Is anything too hard for God? But when she saw the perception of God and the, how he, and the intuition, the, it was like, oh, no, no, I didn't laugh. I didn't know. God can fix your problem. God can fix your problem. I'm talking to me as well. God can fix your problem. Now before this sermon is over, it's going to hit somebody. And if you have to jump up and shout, it's okay. I, I, I can go right ahead and do it. But God can fix your problem. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just shift your thinking. Shift your eyes. Don't, don't, don't look to your, your understanding. Don't, don't, don't lean to that because you can't get it that way. Don't, don't, don't lean to your common sense, your common wisdom. But look to him. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher. Of our faith. Hallelujah. Ah, glory to God. Go ahead and give him some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm sharing with you that Jesus said, this is what we can learn from this text. First, he gave me the text. And then he said, this is what we can learn. No, this is not what we can, can understand. But what we can learn. That with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So